Hello. Hi. We are live from the Colorful Cookie Facebook page. And I'm here with all my cookie friends again. Say hello, everybody. We have a really fun uh, party plan for you today. We've been visiting. We had some lunch. And we just like to get together on occasion and have a good time. Um, we're just a lot of cookie decorators here from the metro area and then a radius of about three hours. So if you're in the vicinity, you know where we are. Um, so welcome to our party. We've planned 10 cookie decorating tutorials for you. We have a whole lineup and um, we're just going to go one at a time and you can ask questions as you have them. We have people here who can answer those questions who are also going to be monitoring the live on their phone. We are going to be having a giveaway that is not associated with Facebook, but we are going to be doing that afterward. And so if you'd like to be entered in the giveaway, share the live and um, feel free to comment on the live too. But to enter the giveaway, share it with your friends. Um, and that giveaway will only be for people within the United States. So, okay, let me start by telling you some of the people who have generously donated giveaways for us. Um, we have Glenda from Decorate the Cake, who's giving away one of her molds from her tutorial today. It's a tree bar. I'm gonna get up close on that. Awesome. Oh mold. my gosh, that's yeah. so cute. Fun tutorial. Um, Mary Ann from this little piggery, piggery, this little piggy <laughs> bakery. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm piggery, yeah. Um, she's giving away some cookie decorating tools. We have a creative cookier who is giving away a $50 gift certificate. Icing Images is giving away a couple of packages of combo stencil materials for regular traditional stencils with bridges and also uh, silk screen stencil kits. Um, a couple of those we're going to give away. Um, Dough Easy is giving away a Dough Easy mat along with the guides for rolling perfect cookies. And I, I don't know if you guys have this tool, but this is one... I cannot live without this tool. It's so easy to use and clean up is simple, so these are awesome. Um, and we'll post, I do have links for all these things too that we can post later. Um, also, um, I have a friend who designs cookie cutters and it's L23CD, which stands for Love to Create. And Dieter is watching. Dieter is watching, hey Dieter. So he has donated, um, Look at these lips, multi-cutter, and then another set of cookie cutters, and he's also giving away digital uh, of the same for people who own a 3D printer. Did I interrupt you before you said his business name? Sorry. I don't, I don't know. Say it's, it again. It's Deer from L23CD. Okay. And uh, let me think. Let me get my list. Um, oh, Cooking Up. If you like Cooking Up, <laughs> we're giving away several bottles of Cooking Up from Mark and Michelle at Cooking Up LLC. Um, we have Graphics Arts, who makes the stencil material that I use, um, has come out with a food safe version. And they are going to be giving away uh, two, two packages each of their five and seven mil food safe stencil material. Uh, the Colorful Cookie Club is going to be giving away, which is me, by the way. I have the Colorful Cookie, the Colorful Cookie Club, and the Colorful Cookie Stencil Studio. So I'm going to be giving away a month in the Colorful Cookie Club, which teaches people how to design and cut their own custom cookie and culinary stencils on a Cricut or a Silhouette Cameo. Um, and then also April from Sweet and Saucy Life is giving away an ebook. So we've got lots of giveaways today. Did I get everybody? So far, but if you've forgotten, I'll remind you. In a okay, list. yes. If I think I've, of it. Oh, wait, I have a list right here. And you oh, cookiecutter.com. Yeah. Tammy from cookiecutter.com, who couldn't be here today. She's also a Kansas City cookier. She owns cookiecutter.com, and she is giving away a set of spring cookie cutters. And I believe that's everybody. Awesome. We had some really generous people donating for our party today. So In April. Yes, April. Did you say, okay. I got April. Didn't I get April? No. Yes, her sorry. Sorry. saucy. I did. <laughs> you were thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just get right in and start. Even some of these cookie decorating tutorials I'm excited to watch because we have glazers here. We have three glazers here. And um, we've got some awesome things coming. So 
If you happen to catch this and you can't stay and watch, it will be on replay on the Colorful Cookie Facebook page, and I will also be posting it on YouTube for you guys. So, all right, um, Sherry, I'm gonna let you take it away. Ah. <laughs> okay, so we are going to have our first demo. Our first tutorial is with Brooke and Cookies by Brooke, and she does glaze. So we're gonna see some of the texture glaze icing techniques that she has. Okay. And we're gonna put this phone up yep, here. We gotta put the phone in the holder, so yeah. You okay, guys give me a second. Have to okay. Give us a second to get this thing situated and make sure that it's facing the right. Okay. We still live. Yep. Yep. We're still live. Okay. Um, I want people. Sorry. Oh, uh, when we put it in the holder, it always pushes the button accidentally. So I do that every time. If we happen to lose the connection for the live, we'll just come right back on, so hang with us. That doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Let's see, I believe, can you guys comment and tell us if you can see everything? Let's make sure you can see it. Um, it's upside down. <laughs> so let me, swivel it. that won't help. Oh, it won't help. No, I wish it would. Let me see if I can flip my camera. I want to make sure that you guys can see it the right way. Okay. I believe that's it. Now look, Sherry. There's a little delay. Okay. Put your yeah, right hand, delay. Brooke, put your right hand up. Hold on. Leave it there. Yep. Okay. Right hand. You can see my lack of Peter says here. it looks good. Jenny says it looks good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just such a delay. Okay, excellent. There is a delay. Is yes. a delay. Okay. okay, guys, it looks like we're ready to go. Brooke, you're up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm trying to show you all how we do. This is, I'm not normally a glaze decorator, I'll tell you yeah. what. I normally use Royal Icing, which is what I use on the airbrush cookies yes. with the Buffalo Plaid. But texture, especially fabric textures, are really, really popular right now. Uh -huh. So I was trying, and I'm not a real big fan of fondant, so I was trying to kind of find an alternative that I could use these really fun texture mats I know those and are so awesome. make like sweater type cookies, but without using fondant. So mm -hmm. that's how I kind of came across this, um, this recipe. And I'm gonna have someone, I'm sure Cameo can probably pull it up, but Pam Sneed with Cookie Crazy. Yes, we all love Pam. This is Pam. Her, her recipe, and it's she calls it um, edible glaze modeling clay, is mm -hmm. what she calls it. And so you can see it looks very similar to Fonnet. Mm -hmm. It's a typical glaze recipe, so it's got a base of corn syrup and powdered sugar. She adds butter to it and decreases the amount of um, water, and so it makes a nice thick, modeling clay. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so when I roll it out, I roll it out in powdered sugar. I'm not sure if that's how everyone does it. That's kind of how I do it. Roll it out in powdered sugar and you need a good amount of it to keep it from sticking. This stuff is sticky. And so I just use my little fondant roller, roll it out. Um. I'm gonna pull this up here so uh -huh. you can see comments. That would be nice to see. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. It's just a time. Is it upside thing. down? It's, it's upside down. It is upside down. Yeah, to but you. They, well, to me. To they them. can see. Okay. So the these mean, are the cookies that I'm gonna be doing. We have a heart. We have a mitten. And these are the mats. These are mats that I got on, I believe I got them on Amazon. They are also available on Etsy. And Glenda, who's part of our group, we need to have her put a link in there. She yeah. has a mat in her shop and she's doing a special today um, for you guys. So if you're interested in one of these sweater texture oh, mats, she has- We have a coupon we'll post for Glenda. It's a it's an image that will get posted for you guys. Hi. We have lots of coupons today too, by the way, from Icing Images also. Go ahead. No, we'll just fine. we'll post it while you're while you're talking here. Yeah, I wanted to. And it'll be posted from so. Amy Sadler. Yes. Because I can't do it from yep. here. Amy's going to be posting the coupons and different links for you guys. Okay, so obviously you want to make sure your cutter is the same direction as your cookie. If you have one that definitely has an up or a down, and I always cut it out before I put it on the cookie instead of texturing it first because I mess up the texture every single time that I try to move it. So, you can put this on a base of glaze. You can put on a base of royal icing or some, some corn syrup. I actually am gonna stick it directly on the cookie um, and it'll actually adhere itself after a little bit, but the nice thing about that is if you mess it up, 
you can peel it right off again and you can re-roll it and um, fix any little mistakes that you make. So I'm just gonna stick it right on the bear cookie and I just go around and make sure that it's kind of covering everything. And then I take my, um, my texture mat and I put it right on top and just very gently go over the whole thing. You don't have to push very hard. I wouldn't recommend pushing very hard because it'll stick. And I did kind of dust my mats down just a little bit with powdered sugar, not too much, because it'll really show up on that red when I get to the red cookie. But I did dust them down a little bit. So once you're done, you can just gently peel that off. If you don't like it on the first take, if it doesn't have a good enough texture, you can put it right back on top and do it again. And if you have a little extra that's kind of coming off the side, this one didn't do too bad, but I just take a little butter knife and just clean up my edges. And it works pretty well. So that's the knit texture mat. Can I taste it? Yes. I want to give everybody my so, I have a whole on bag on me. <laughs> <laughs> Will the red okay. make my tongue red? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and your hands and everything else. Oh, my goodness. Wait, let me... Mm. I wish you could see my face. Um, get down there. No. <laughs> um, it's yummy. Um, what's it taste like? Um, so... The way that PM describes it is like a rolled buttercream or a, it, a that's buttercream. That's what it is. And if you, it's if you creamy with a um, very buttercreamy, that's uh -huh. it. It's if you creamy. have if you have seen recipes for a rolled buttercream, it is very similar. Yum. That, that's Pam's name for this recipe, and that's what okay. I use. But a rolled buttercream is very similar. Somebody post so. a link. Would you? Um, did someone okay. get Pam's Can on there? You, Perfect. Okay. Posting Pam's link. I did earlier. Oh, good. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. Coming in late. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this one can be a little bit tricky. Um, because it does, I like to use it up and down instead of going, and really with the heart, you have to kind of watch the size of cutters you use. Like I have a really big mitten that I would love to use for this. It doesn't work. So you kind of have to watch the size of your mat, the size of your cutter, and try to match it up a little bit. But yeah, these mats, I got a four pack of them for I think 10 bucks, but they're, they're really handy. I see some more over here that are so much fun. This stuff is very forgiving. I've had to peel it off, redo it two, three times. It's, it's, and I made that entire tray of cookies this morning in less than an hour. So you can crank them out pretty fast yeah, it's a lot, um, start you to finish. Right. To do the impression on it. Okay, so this one you can see, I have a little bit of an edge here that didn't get my mat. So I'm gonna just very gently line it up and press it in. Try to, I try to do that on the edge of the cookie. But it is a little tricky when you can't turn that. I mean, I could turn it sideways, but I just like it up and down. And then I always come and clean up my edges wherever it went off. Okay, so there's nice. nothing. So start to finish, it's a very fast cookie. That's what I was gonna say. It is, you can crank out a lot of these really, really quick. When you posted this, I tried to figure out how on earth you were piping that. I, I like, I don't well, and I actually do have a stencil for um, for doing knit with royal icing too, but honestly, this you get, you get a wow factor with this. People immediately just wanna know how you did that. And I'm all for anything that's got a lot of bang for the buck, you know? So if you like buttercream on your cookies, you're going to love this cookie. What's that? I have not tried it. Uh, Cameo, you probably could answer that one. Putting So the question was if you could put royal icing on top of it. And Cameo is saying she puts glaze on top of it. Um, I have seen, and if you follow Pam, I have seen her put glaze on top of it. And I wonder if she's doing it as transfers. Do you do it? Do you do transfers with glaze? You Where you would have a piece that's art to, to dry, yeah. So if you're doing any embellishments, usually you just pipe some script on top or just little details and that. Yeah. Totally yeah. It is a longer a longer process because of the drying time with glaze. Yeah. I don't do a lot with glaze. So Kimi is up next and she does everything with glaze. And so I'm really fascinated by it. I've just started dabbling in it. And so I would love to, to so pick tell her brain. Us when you make a batch of say three dozen cookies, how much um, of this So I actually had a cookie class last night. Um, and use them for my guinea pigs mm -hmm. and so we covered probably about a dozen cookies and this 
and that entire platter is one batch plus the dozen that I did last night is one batch of glaze. So it makes a lot. This is one two pound bag of powdered sugar. So it makes a lot. You could probably cover at least two to, I would say probably more like three or four dozen cookies with one batch of this stuff. So it goes a long ways. And you can stick it in the freezer. I've, I've done it because I don't use very much at a time. And it's been thawed out. Yes, yeah. right here. Would the butter cause a problem? And I'm assuming she's asking with like how long it'll last. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about this being so quick is I literally do it the morning that it's going out. Okay. So if I'm doing it as part of a platter, I'll do everything else first. I do royal icing and then I do this last. So they know what you're answering. Oh, right here you can see the questions. Does it dry enough to bag or stack? So eventually it does dry dry enough to stack. I mean, you're probably gonna need what, about 24 hours? Yeah. And yeah. what's it called again? It is called, um, it's Cookie Crazy's recipe, and it's called um, Edible Glaze Molding Clay, is what she calls it. Um, and the link has been posted up above in the yes. comments. Yes, and I did it again. It's very, very similar to rolled buttercream. Can you use fondant mold? Is that like the little roses and the bows? Yes, you can. You can push them This is pretty much anything you can do with fondant, and so this is, the, I think, a good alternative. And if you guys want to taste it, see what you think. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of it, so you can try it. But it does taste pretty good. What's that? That's another good question for Camille. I haven't tried it yet. Camille, can you paint it? Yep, it does hold a paint. Yeah, this is a game changer. This is where you find out how much your cookie spreads. See? <laughs> Mine spread. <laughs> but you can still, I mean, you can still. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just work it out. And you want to make sure that all your powdered sugar on the red is worked out before you, you know, that you don't have a bunch of it sitting on top because you can't get that off afterwards. Unless so, what about a brush to dust the powdered sugar off? You can do that, but you have to let it set for a few hours or it completely ruins it. It's so because soft. Because the brush will it will make ruin lines it. in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. it well, what it'll do is it'll eliminate your texture. Um, just Kathy, that quick. I'll tell you, I tasted, I ate the little ball she gave me. It wasn't very little, but um, I'm a sugar freak. So it um, tastes 10, 20 times better than fondant. It's very buttercreamy. The texture is very soft and smooth, and I'm just going to say it's buttercreamy. <laughs> That's the best I can give you. That's how she describes it, too. I think yeah. it's a good description. If you guys would like to be entered in the giveaway, please share this live. Um, that way, other cookiers can find it because we have some really awesome tutorials planned. And this one is awesome, too, by the way. I love it. What makes okay. it stick to the cookie? This yeah. one, honestly, I don't have anything down. I mean, you could put something down, uh, but it'll it'll just stick. It's it's a sticky. It is, and now, right now, I can pull it up and I can re-roll it. Oh. But give it a couple of hours. If you grab one of the ones that's already been and this, these, I did this morning. So you can you can pull it off, but it's a little bit harder to do after it's been steamed for a couple hours. It's sticky stuff. You have to use plenty. And I'm gonna read. See, all right. So if you can see. Can you I didn't quite get the all of my texture in the middle. I'm not real thrilled with that. So I'm going to just... Can you hold it closer to the phone so they can... Yep. Can you see? Yep. There's a place in the middle where I really didn't get my texture very good. So I just stick my mat right back on top and do it again. You don't even place it in the same spot? Not even. Really? <laughs> 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 Your OCD just kicked right in, didn't it? <laughs> she wouldn't even put it in the same spot. <laughs> I was thinking that too. How do you line it up? No, because it'll eliminate everything you that was there the heart, first Brooke. time. You it's hurt so my heart, Brooke. You hurt my heart. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, yeah. Donna's. I know. I just Thank gave you, you a little heart attack. But can you tell it was done twice? Oh you my can. gosh. That is neat. I yep. feel better. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> no, I definitely have a lot more to pull off the sides, but wow. you can't tell. This is awesome. All right, so where's Sherry? Do I have time to do my mitten or am I running low? You can do your mitten. I'm doing good? Okay. Are we doing good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to cut you off short. This is too good. We got a couple more minutes. Okay. But yeah, this can is really fun stuff. Mike? I, I've yes. just started Out in playing Facebook with it. Land. Can you guys hear uh, Brooke talking? Because her, the microphone on the phone is not facing her mouth. It's facing the other way. So I want to make sure everybody can hear. Would you let me know, Kim? Maxine, Dieter, can you let me know you can hear Brooke okay? Oh, hush. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's power. Oh, yeah. And Brooke, the question is, where do you get the mats and molds at? Who's the great inventor? Oh, oh well, lots of inventors. That's a but good Glenda question. from Decorate the Cake is here, and that's what she does. 
Mm -hmm. um, and we, Amy, did you post the coupon code for her? Uh, I posted her Facebook page. The co I, uh, I know. We, okay. I talked to her. She's trying to get it, the link fixed. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, but I shared her Facebook page to Glenda the Good Witch if everybody wants to go. But she, <laughs> she is going to be um, also doing a, a mold later on. Yes, so we'll she repost. Will. So just look yes. for the comments. Yeah, she's got yeah. some more yeah. molds. But yeah, and she's got a coupon going on right now, so you guys can save yeah. some money on it. But um, thank you for the coupon. So fun. I have I have brick, I have stone, I have all kinds of little textures. Um wood bark. I mean I'm I'm just kind of getting started in this and it's just kind of a kind of a hole a rabbit hole that you go down and you don't come back out. It's really fun. When it's so fast. I think that's what part of what I'm addicted to. You get such an impressive cookie and it's so fast. I did this in so I did this in the fall with pumpkins and leaves. And so um, that was when I think Nancy first saw them was when I did the pumpkin platter and they yes. are beautiful for that. And then um, of course they go great with the buffalo plat. I think that's a good compliment to them. But they are a really good fall cookie and then of course I needed to update them a little bit for winter for Valentine's Day so that's why I went with the mittens and the hearts. Okay. And tell them where to find you on Facebook. All right. So uh, if you go to Facebook, you can find me at Cookies by Brooke. Um, Instagram is the same, Cookies by Brooke, and cookiesbybrooke.com is my webpage. So. Okay, everybody, follow Cookies by Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See her beautiful work. All right. So I will hop on and try to answer questions while we get our next person set up. But that is all I have for y'all. Perfect. That's so. Yay. So go we'll pause for just a minute and we'll let someone else get set up. Just be patient with us for a guys second. Guys, have you guys all got to sample some of this, this glaze? I've got tons of it. So. You want to show, did you kind of pull it apart under the camera so they could see the texture of it? It's not as stretchy as fondant. Uh -huh. Closer up to the camera. See that? Up okay, here. So yeah. It's not. <laughs> this camera. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of elasticity to it. It's like, it's, very it's soft. just like Play-Doh. And I know because it I taught kindergarten for years and I love Play-Doh. It really is. It's, it's just exactly a, like It's a neat texture. Don't eat the Play-Doh, kids. And it will make your mixer protest. Be, I, I took half the batch out and then colored the other half red and it, my mixer wasn't quite as angry with me at that point in time. It, it did not like me there for a little bit with this stuff. Yeah, kneading, kneading it in afterwards definitely is a good idea to get the, uh, the texture right. So, okay. Cameo's face so she can okay can you guys see cameo hi everybody we well, in a minute yeah <laughs> we just saw you peek you saw me peek look <laughs> oh down. she's upside down but she has to be upside down for you to see the cookies exactly. right side up <laughs> tell who you are cameo i'm cameo robinson with cr confections <laughs> upside down coolest hair ever coolest hair ever <laughs> Now I gotta get the. Maybe we shouldn't do that because then I have to reset the camera. Everybody at home is like. Oh. I know. Now everybody's telling us they're upside down. Everybody's like, <gasps> you're breaking. Ah. You better fix that. This shot before I get up there. Oh, the right hand. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Hi, Dolores. You're good. Dolores. Dolores. <laughs> Dolores Sword, we miss you. We do miss you. She's probably on vacation. Right. Somewhere tropically warm. Uh, so today I'm just going to kind of talk about, kind of piggybacking off of what Brooke had talked about. Um, basically, I when I first started out, I actually used Pam's uh, edible clay, uh, clay recipe to 
Um, come up with a way to make the roses that you, everybody made that were so pretty on like a circle cookie and it was all were pretty and I thought, oh, if I thinned it down a little bit then I could make it to where I could pipe it like that. And then as I started working a little bit more with it, I saw that I could thin it down even more and I could do script writing. Um, if you've ever done any, worked with any glaze, you know that you can't do scripts. It's very hard because glaze's number one thing is to go with itself. Every time it's with glaze, it wants to go with every other piece of glaze near it. So you can't do script because, um, it, this is upside down, sorry. So if I were to do this with just glaze icing, the L's, the loops and the L's would go together. It wouldn't look like an L, the E would go together. So you have to do something different with glaze. So I thinned down Pam's edible clay and basically came up with a detail glaze. Um, lots of people call it different things in this in the glazing world, um, but I'm just I call it detail glaze because that's all I do with it is do details with it. So it's what I use script writing with. It's what I do the brush embroidery. It's what I do uh, any of the needlepoint, anything like that. So I on my Facebook page I had a video that I did last week that talks about the detail glaze and how you can create it. Um, because it's just glaze icing with a little bit of fat in it. So it can be butter, it can be shortening, cream cheese. it could be cream cheese. Um, it can be any sort of fat that will hold on to the powdered sugar and hold its shape so that it doesn't blend into itself. Um, and there's, at least for me, there's no like right or wrong thing. I just put a little bit of butter in with a quarter cup of glaze icing and that's pretty much my detail glaze recipe. Um, I'm not real picky about it. Um, or it's not a real like scientific. I'm sure out there, I'm sure there's recipes that are out there that tell you exactly what to do, but I'm just more of like, I just need a little bit of fat and put a little bit of powdered sugar with it and thicken it up. I saw somebody ask me about these bags. They're sinful cutter bags. I really don't know if sinful cutter actually has them again. Um, I haven't checked lately, but they're tiny or de super detail bags or tiny detail bags. Um, I do like them for micro piping. Y'all are making me sick. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I had to quit washing for a little while. <laughs> well, you were upside down. We were fine on Brooke, so I'm not oh. gonna move the camera again. Okay. Because when I moved it to your face, my camera flip-flopped. Oh, no. It, okay. Um, so somebody asked me what my Facebook page is. It's CR Confections. How much butter to a quarter of a cup? Probably a teaspoon or so-ish. Melt, melted butter? Or? Uh, no, just like room temperature. Mm -hmm. You just want it to mix in real good into the glaze. You don't want any like lumps of butter, which has happened. If you let it sit out for any amount of time, it will like start to harden back up. So, yeah, I just mix it in there, too. Um, can you put royal icing on glaze? Yes, you can. There's lots of people that do that. Adding fat, will it dry? Yes, because it has corn syrup in it, so the corn syrup allows it to dry like completely. So these cookies were made yesterday, um, and so they are completely dry. They can be stacked, they can be bagged, um, and the I was trying to show you the difference. So I'll wait till Nancy kind of gets done with Butter We're just trying to distract you as much right, as possible. Right, and it's working. <laughs> Lord. Right. So I tried to make this cookie different. So on this side of the on this side of the cookie, I did glaze. And the brush embroider did not work as well as this side did. So that just goes to show you, like even doing brush embroider, I wanted this. Where do you want it? From here? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I will not move my camera again. Go closer to, this, to, the, app, to the iPad. I am. I'm like almost touching the iPad. Actually, there. 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 Okay. Well, we've got the light. Yes? Okay. So, do you see the brush? Whoa. There we go. The brush strokes you can see no, on the brush embroidery. No. Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was real close. You can you see go. them, though. Okay. Uh, so you can see the brush strokes, I'm sh and then on the other side, you can't see the brush strokes. And that's because this one was detailed glaze, this one just was normal glaze. All just of for these your information, mm -hmm. the camera is on that side of the phone. Right here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All of these little details, those were all done with detail glaze. Again, if I put these tiny little dots next to each other, they would just go together and it would look like a line. So you have to use the detail glaze in order to get 
this kind of detail. Uh, same thing with the embroidery or whatever, the needlepoint. Um, I'm still new to this. This is not not my cup of tea. <laughs> um, I like micropiping, love micropiping. I'm not a big fan of the needlepoint, but I'm practicing. It's a challenge for me, so I like challenges. Um, but yeah, that's all detail glaze. If I did that together with just glaze, it would just immediately run together and it would look like weirdo lines on your cookie. Um, even if you cut your whole teeny tiny, it still does not keep it from running together at all. Um, so I was trying to answer some questions. Is the whole cookie detailed and filled with glaze? Yes, it is. Thank you for the beautiful cookie. Um, so I was going to show you just the, on the, one of the hearts, the really pretty like bead borders that everybody puts around their cookies. Um, you cannot do that with glaze by itself. Again, it doesn't hold on to those blops around. It just runs and makes basically a solid line. So in order to do a bead border, you have to use uh, the detail glaze. So I use the little bags. You don't have to use these tiny bags. I had one left, so I figured why not use it and not waste it. So I cut it, it's pretty cut pretty small, but it, you can just use your tips if you have those, if that's the route that you go. It works just like glaze, or I would assume just like Royal. Um, so you're just going to start and make your dots. I don't know if anybody's gonna be able to see this, it's so small. And you just drag your line and make a dot. So I'm gonna hold it up to the camera real quick. So you're just making a dot, dragging a line, and then making another dot, dragging, dragging, dragging. I think everybody's probably seen, um, name off some people. Who does the bead border all the time? Sweet Ams. Yeah, she does the bead border all the time. And she does it so quick. I can't even begin to do something that quick. So if I had done this with just regular glaze, it would not it would not stand up. It would all just kind of flop together. So that's detail glaze. Do you let your cookie dry completely before you detail? Yes. Um, one of the biggest things with glaze is your time management. Um, glaze you have to let dry at least four or five hours to get the top to be crusted, at least. But Generally, I let it dry for 24 hours. So I flood one day all my cookies, and then the next day I do all the detail work, and then the next day I either bag it or paint if there's any details that need to be hand painted. Then I'll paint those and then I'll bag them. My hand is shaking. Y'all made me nervous. It's because we're all watching. <laughs> right, it's pretty hard to decorate a cookie while you've got <laughs> all sorts of people watching you. Do you share your recipe? Yeah, or? it's just Pam's. I mean, Pam Sneed at Cookie Crazy has been, she is the pioneer of glaze. She has every recipe, every tutorial. So I, I'm pretty sure all of us that do glaze feel the same way. We don't recreate the wheel. She's done all the work. So we give her all the credit because she's done all that work. Um, but yeah, I definitely just use her recipe. I have all this time and then her edible clay is what I basically watered down to do the detail glaze. Recipe for detail glaze. Uh, so the recipe for the detail glaze, you can go to my Facebook page, see our confections and there's a video on it. Or you can just add about a teaspoon of butter to a quarter cup of glaze icing and then thicken it or thin it down to your likeness. Pam Sneed at Cookie Crazy. No, and craters. So craters are in the glaze world. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> oh my gosh, they make me so mad. So craters are like the worst thing. We have craters all the time. Like all the time. Glaze is notorious. And there's things you can do, but this type of icing, this detail icing for sure helps this 100%. So if I'm doing polka dots on anything, like especially that cookie, those, had I done those with just glaze, those, even the little ones, they would have totally catered, cratered. Um, any big writing that you do, any big letters would have cratered, the middle would have cratered out. So yeah, I definitely, I use this detail glaze for a lot. And it works well for, you know, script writing. You can just go in and it just works really well. It just holds its shape, it doesn't move. So, it just works really well. Beautiful. You did dehydrate with that? 
Uh, there's certain people that do. I do not. I don't. I won't, don't want my cookies to get hard. And I'm not saying that they there's do, but I just choose this. What I choose. I found a method that works. So it's just one day's flooding, one day's detail, the next day's bagging. Um, definitely letting your cookies dry for 24 hours so you can avoid that butter bleed <laughs> that we all seem to be having a hard time with. <laughs> Can you hold so, that cookie up? This one? So they can see. Yeah, so this it's is the so needle pretty. point. Um, and here's bleed. Here's again, it's so dry here in Kansas City. Like my red just bled right onto my white because it's just so dry. It just sucks in that color. Um, but yeah, it, it turned out really pretty. Can you over air spray? Yeah, you can airbrush over glaze. You have to use a different type of airbrush or use regular airbrush color and start super duper light and work your way. It takes a long time. So I just use the alcohol based airbrush and they work bet a lot better. Can it be used on top of a royal icing base? I would I would think so. I would think it I would think be able so. to. Yeah. In one of yeah. those classes. Did she do it? Oh yeah, yeah we did. Didn't we yeah. do that? In her class? We did a royal icing we did a over top of royal and glaze. Okay. I thought it came out. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. I'm going to steal this. Okay, next <laughs> up is going to be Sandra Seegers. The Frosted Swirl Bake Shop. And she's doing the cordless airbrush. Ooh, the cordless airbrush. <laughs> Oh, there's a delay, isn't there? Oh, I can't even look at it, can I? <laughs> okay, so I am I am not, by any means, a master airbrusher. <laughs> no, I just, I fell in love with this airbrush when I went to Cookie Con. Um, Truly Mad Plastics had it on display, and it, I looked at it and fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wanted it and they sold out. They had none to offer. So I got home and was obsessed. They branded it. Um, so it was going to take a little bit of time for them to get any in. So I belong in a cookie group that um, I kind of, we were talking about it. And one of my friends threw up a link for China and I jumped on it. <laughs> I jumped on it and it was inexpensive it took about three weeks to get it and it came fully charged so it was fantastic um, this is the compressor the air compressor it's all in one I don't, it's all in one the the airbrush screws onto the top and it's got a really nice sized well with a lid um, I would say you have one, right, Shelly? Yeah, but I haven't used it. That's why I'm watching you. Like you haven't crazy. used it? <laughs> <laughs> ah! I told you I'm a busy girl. Wait, how long have you had it? Months. Months. Months? No, months? <laughs> no time out. Since Shelly also has an edible printer oh, that she hasn't no. used for two years. We need to flip no. this around and, and shame you. Because... <laughs> okay. There's no Shelly shaming. <laughs> she will try that in two years. In two years. Yes. It oh. is. Do you have any other airbrush? Yeah. Okay. I have the Dinky Doodle also. And the Dinky Doodle is, is not as um, powerful as this one. So you kind of have to get a little used to the flow, but it's all controlled with the trigger, just like your regular airbrushes. What I like is that it sits on my desk. <laughs> and Nancy just told me about somebody who has like four or five of them and has just different colors in them. And then she can just- That I store. Right. <laughs> She no, just pulls. Let me store them for you. Yes, will store them. So it's it it won't spill. It's got. I mean, unless you're gonna fill it completely to the top, which I I don't. You have to do a zillion cookies. 
to I think it's it to the top. <laughs> I think so. I think it's funny that the last time I did a live, I had a you did. swimmer stamp, that's and right. I got another one. Um, you sure that's a swimmer stamp? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's a tattoo. <laughs> so it's kind of loud. Um, it when you set it down on your desk, it vibrates and it's loud, but I'm okay with that. But this is the um, charging plug. And mine lasts about, I don't know, two weeks, don't you think? Oh, mine lasts a really long Does time. Does it? Yeah. I, I will I mean, say. Not more than two weeks, but yeah. Okay, I will say that I would not use it for hundreds of cookies because the compressor does get hot. Um, it, it'll vibrate this, um, the airbrush to kind of come loose a little bit. So you kind of, I always just kind of have my finger like this and just kind of keep it tight. So yeah, so I'm gonna demo it because it's fantastic. <laughs> I want one. And it's red. Yeah. And it's and it's red. Red. Oh, so okay. So Truly Mad Plastic has them now. They are completely branded for their brand. Um, they're purple, aren't they? They're purple. Yeah. They're fantastic. Did you? Oh, really? We won't tell you. People want to know the China China source. <laughs> okay, I got it at AliExpress. Yes, it's AliExpress. Oh it is it is literally the Amazon of China, and it takes two to three weeks. I will add if you do order from there. I ordered. I got mine just fine, and it was actually fast. But I know of someone who has ordered and didn't get theirs, but they were charged. So. If you're going to order, when you search for these, you'll see a lot of different companies selling them on AliExpress. Make sure you read their reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like eBay. It's just like yeah. I buy my tipless bags just, off eBay. Even, you need to go buy yeah. the highest rated vendor. Yes. Uh, you, we do that with everything anyway. So it's the needle was bent. Oh, was it? See, and I think that that's the great thing about Truly Mad Plastics yeah, right. offering you know it. You can go on ahead and maybe if they're offering replacement needles right. or replacement gun it should right. I think fit yeah. it yeah. should work right. yeah. so I just need to find the size needle and yeah. right mm -hmm. so the power button is right here and it's on when I put it on my desk it's a little high pitched but yeah so comes out a little forceful so just be, <laughs> be gentle with it. Um, this is on a not, a not a cookie, so it's gonna look fabulous because it's not like our regular How bumpy cookies. It is also, it absolutely is for makeup too. I was gonna get one for my daughter for Christmas, but she said no, so. They do show it as, yep. as, as a makeup. makeup brush. Oh, and I will say that if your, if your compressor uh, runs out of juice, you can use it plugged in. Oh, Richard would like you to paint abs on him. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a completely different line. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is Nancy Stencil. It's the buffalo plaid. I'm sure, you know, it is the end all be all this year, I think, for stencils. It is. It's very popular. I always just go lightly first and then go back over to make it darker. Um. This is um, what I think, and you can give your opinion. When I use mine, the compressor um, puts the airbrush color out with a lot more force yes. and uh, pressure. So it's not the same as using your airbrush on low pressure if you have a genie or a cookie counter. It's a little bit different, but it has a beautiful spray. My Dinky Doodle um, did not have levels, I guess. Uh -huh. Speeds, sorry. <laughs> levels. It didn't have speeds. So it was all one and it would, it started off a lot uh, slower. It took a minute to get used to, but it's all about, I guess, the pressure that you're gonna, you know, use on it. Had that been a real cookie? <laughs> you flipped so flat. I know. So you're gonna use yours now, right? You need to. It's it's fantastic. Set it on your desk and then just go. I just also wanted to tell you I have sugar mail that I haven't used yet either. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, me too. So I'm, I'm oh, in that yeah, boat with too. you. <laughs> me too. So yeah, so that's the cordless uh, airbrush. I love it. I think it's the next best thing. So yeah. do um, luster. I don't. Okay, I I tried um, Americolor uh, the pearl, and that never went through my my dinky doodle. It always got clogged and. It, it did the same thing on this one. What I like about this one also is that you can just, you don't have to take off, like you can take it all over to your sink and literally shoot it out with cleaner in your sink with the compressor turned on. Um, I used to always take off. On your, on your Super Pearl from Americolor, if you drop a stainless steel ball bearing down into the bottle and shake it, really? it gets rid of your lumps and stuff because I airbrush theirs all the time. Oh, really? I don't know if my airbrush is different. <laughs> Does it go through? I don't have one of those ball bearings. Can I, get one? I had to buy like 14, so I do still have some. <laughs> but that's fantastic well, because I know people do, you know, um, the gold, they do the silver through it. They, with, I've never done it. I've had airbrushes clog up on me constantly. I hate taking them apart. I'm awful at it. Um, it's scary to do it for me. Um, it clumps in the bottom, so I drop that ball bearing in there and shake it. I don't run ever clear through this. I've done, I have Dinky Doodle Cleaner. Um, that's the only thing I've ever run through it. Um, I think you can do water. I don't know. I haven't done that. So she did You did water with yours? Do it. So sheens go through this fine or they clog? Well, I think if I can do your trick with getting the clumps out, then maybe it will. I mean, it's, I think, didn't Americolor have a deal with their pearl sheens not going through air gun? They have like a batch, and I think I got that batch that wasn't going through guns. Um, I mean, it's gonna, if it clogs it, just, you know, take it apart. <laughs> Just get another one. <laughs> but yeah, that's the airbrush. I love it. Super. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to Oh, um, I thought I did. I'm with the Frosted Sorrel Bake Shop, and I'm on Facebook and Instagram. He did send these for her. He does it for chocolate. Okay. And up next, we have Rebecca. Where'd she go? With 3T. Um, she's going to do embellishments with glitter and sprinkles. Come on up. <laughs> so go ahead and introduce yourself and show where to find you. Just start. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm Rebecca Liotta. I am from 3T Bakery. Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram or at www.3tbakery.com. I am out of Olathe, Kansas. So what I'm going to show you today are um, how to do 3D embellishments with and make pretty snowflakes. So to speed up the process, what I've done is I have flooded is this where do i <laughs> it, it's a delay, it's a delay. They can okay see it. sorry <laughs> so i have flooded this snowflake white and i'm not sure if you can really see it on the camera but i have sprayed it with um pearl airbrush spray and i also used some roxy and rich luster dust out of this little pump so with those two together, it gives it like a really pretty shimmery sheer to your snowflake. So I really enjoy putting depth and dimensions into my cookies. So, um, and I love sprinkles. Who doesn't love sprinkles? So we are just going to quickly pipe some lines in your snowflake. And you can, you know, and you love to pipe. I do love to pipe. <laughs> Good thing about snowflakes are there is 
not an identical snowflake out there. So you are pretty unlimited at designing a very unique and pretty snowflake. So we have our base piping down and this is my favorite little tray. I bought this off of Amazon. I think it's called, a, I don't know, sanding tray. Yeah, amazing. So I just put some sanding salt in the tray and I just take this and I... Sanding salt, sanding sugar? Yep. <laughs> And you just put it upside down, put a little bit of pressure. So, after I've done that, I like to go in and just add some unsanded designs. And we can put some dragées on it to make it even fancier if we want. See, look how pretty this is turning out. What's that? You gotta have a tweezer. Oh yeah, you have to have a tweezer. <laughs> And just in a matter of minutes, you have a very pretty snowflake. So yeah, you're the best. We're gonna put it up. Yeah, I'm gonna put it up here. Yeah, I'm gonna I was kind of nervous and shaky, so it's not my best piping, but you know. <laughs> it's just there you go. What's that? Actually, if it wasn't perfect, I would wonder if there was, you know, something going on. Because I don't, I, nobody's perfect. Yeah. My mom said I am. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I love you, Sherry. Some of the products that I used, I, I love this Wilton spray. This one's actually silver, but what I sprayed on here was pearl, but you can get this at your local Walmart, you know? Um, and then this is actual like pearl um, airbrush spray. So I either go over the snowflake with one of those two, and then I always just put this for the extra shimmer and glitter. And then just the sanding salts, like this is a silvery type sanding salt, or we have white here. Um, both sanding work great. Sugar. Sanding sugar. Did I say salt? Yeah. Uh -huh. You yeah. know, yeah. it's really, it is. I was talking about, <laughs> I was talking about salting my steps oh, earlier. It's the 74th day of January, don't you? Yes. Oh gosh, yes. Long Monday. Yeah. Next Thursday, negative 30. Oh gosh. It's no! <laughs> then we can talk cleaning salt. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and then these are the dragées. I decided to do white with this demonstration, but silver looks really pretty on snowflakes as well. Is Alaska in the house? No, but somebody from Greece is. Wow! Is it Tina? Up here. Tina? Hi, Tina. I bet it is Tina. I don't know. No, there was not a whole lot of wine involved today. No. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did drink some. <laughs> Actually, Richard made yeah, us a Tina. signature. Yeah, I thought it was. Richard made us a signature cocktail, and it's apple cinnamon infused vodka. Vodka with um, Canada Dry. Oh my gosh! It's ginger ale. Canada. Yeah, ginger ale. It is ginger so ale. good. It's our signature drink, guys. Hey, I want to remind everyone, if you share this Facebook Live, you get entered into win the giveaways that we're doing, but you have to share. <laughs> <laughs> we want all your cookie friends to see it. There's some amazing ladies here. Do you retake the sanding tray? No, I don't retake the sanding tray between cookies. I, the only, I just kind of shake it so that it's, you know, nice and flat and... 
I usually just empty it out when I'm done or refill it when it's low, so you don't have to empty it. Good job, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Katie who's going to paint with petal dust. Oh, she's cutting them right up. Am I transferring everything Oops. right here? Yes. Okay. Or you can do it on the train if you want to. Oh, that might that throw me off. And tell them who you are, introduce yourself. I am you. Katie with Beautifully Delicious Cookies, and I am in, I'm in South Kansas City, Missouri. Um, these were all done with uh, painted, I don't have the other clear. I don't know what I did with that. I'll get it. Um, painted petal dust. So let's see if we got this going on. Um, lovely. I didn't even have to bake cookies for this. These were left over from Christmas wreaths, um, which was super handy. So this also was left over. Not edible, but lovely. And what I use, these little trays are my favorite thing ever. Um, and I have, I don't know if you can see those. I'm waiting to see. Okay, so I usually leave a couple blank because that's where my um, my extra Everclear goes, so that I can rinse off my to my toothbrush, my uh, paintbrush. <laughs> also important, um, and control the uh, the consistency a little bit better. I do typically put some in and make my paints. To begin with, it dries so fast that if it's too much Everclear, then all I have to do is wait a second. One of the reasons that I really love painting with these petal dusts, and then some of what I have here is luster dust, um, is because it works so fast. And um, I am able to, excuse me, I have a sniffly nose. My she's, hand. Sorry, she's using Everclear. Yes, it's just Everclear. Just an almond bottle. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is my smaller bottle. I I buy it in large quantities. My husband is, he questions me. So I am going to demo this this flower one. Um, and my brush is a little bit thick here, and I'm a little bit shaky because watching me. Uh, are you having people watch me is always that is a, little a thing. I've been drinking mm -hmm. the <laughs> I know, I know. If I could only cut back. Um, so I do just a nice little, gosh, I'm really shaky. Give her a shot. <laughs> Maybe I need more. <laughs> So, Haley Goat says, I love BD Casey. Oh, that's my sister in law. Hi. <laughs> my babies are supposed to be watching too. Hi, Georgie and Charlie. They were so excited. They think I'm a movie star. Um, so, you know, I really enjoy that. So, then this is still a little bit th uh, thin, but it operates kind of like. An acrylic. I was never very good at, um, I could do watercolor a little bit, but I was never very good at anything like an oil. Um, my grandma was an art teacher, and so we did quite a bit of playing around with that stuff. But you know, some things are just meant to be, and some things are not. I am one of the most impatient cookiers I've ever met. Gosh, these shakes are driving me nuts. <laughs> Shay says, hi, mommy. <laughs> that's my other sister-in-law. My husband has four sisters, so that's always really fun. Oh, so, yeah. They're saying hi. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, Karen. Hey, Karen. Karen says we're all movie stars. <laughs> we're yes. just cookiers having fun just like everybody else. It's really fun to, uh, to be able to do the silly stuff. Oh, and Maxine. Hey, Maxine. I know some of these people because they're in the Colorful Cookie Club. <laughs> oh, cool. Hi guys, we visit strangers. Every week. We visit every week on Thursday evening. They're, they they are always so sweet. <laughs> okay, so I've got my my little uh, Vine. leaves and vines going, and it's actually the darker green is completely dry already. So 
Tell okay. them again what the brand is. Oh, girl, I use a little bit of everything. Um, I pick out what colors I like based on that. And honestly, the light green is starting to dry as well. Um, it's petal dust. You can use luster dust also. I love luster dust. Anything sparkly or gold or fun. Um, the stuff I buy is usually in little tubes like this. Wilton makes a brand. Sunnyside Up makes a brand. Sunnyside Up has a ton of different colors. Um, this Barco is one of my very favorites. Um, it is a turquoise. I haven't either. Sunnyside Up is a Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. It's the pink and black brand. Um, this I found at Michael's just kind of randomly, but I love it. And if I use a color frequently, I will, I have a bunch of these little jars, they're paint jars. And so the lid just pops off and I put my Everclear right in there and I can put the lid back on and it doesn't evaporate at the same rate that I prefer. Okay. So for the flowers, I don't put the Everclear right in because I want a little bit more control of my consistency. So. Shay says, my mom makes the best cookies. You know, that's my baby. <laughs> They're with Shay. <laughs> Shay's typing for your baby. I also, I started cookies because my oldest decided on her birthday that she didn't right want cake. She yeah. didn't like cake oh. anymore. See, right here. Oh, she does. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Okay, and you can see that this is going on much faster and you can actually have different dimensions and it turns much more opaque than a typical watercolor. So, I don't mean to take forever guys, but okay. this is kind of fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I love it, I love it. You're Bob Ross, we're all watching. <laughs> right. Happy little trees. Happy yeah. little flowers and I vines. Guys, I love Bob Ross. <laughs> I work in a middle school and Bob Ross is what, it, thank you. You see me just using my fingers over here. We're not eating these, so I'm not, not too worried. Um, you can make all sorts of little flowers and sometimes I make up my own varieties. So, um, again, I love this technique because of how quick it is. Um, we'll kind of stop with that. One of the things that I love to also do is I've got a whole slew of these thin tip, fine tip markers. Um, looks like I have a variety of brands. We have Yummy Art. We have some food writers, some food doodlers, and then I have some bigger food writers. Um, some of these came from Walmart. Some of them I ordered just random. I, I buy them based on the color. So because those are all already dry, I can go back and add some finer details to this. And This, by the way, is also glaze, guys. Um, I just learned a thousand things that I don't actually do with glaze from Cameo. Um, funny how we all do it so differently. I like how we can all draw inspiration from someone that we are, you know, we all start somewhere as cookieers. Mm -hmm. And I think we all start the same, looking online, finding those cookieers that pop up, you follow them, you find others, and you kind of take what they do and make your own spin on it. Yeah, inspiration. So, two so, questions, they want to know if you can fix a blotch, if you blotch, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is add, that. that was actually with a marker. Uh, this one right here. Did you freehand it? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me to show you that because <laughs> it won't come out. So this is actually a lighter color green than what uh, the other green is. So even on the dark, because it is a luster dust, it kind of washes away that darker color and you can get the two tone here just by adding that. And then, let's see, I'm kind of coming back in here and giving a little bit more depth to my flowers because it is all one color. The other thing with luster dust is that you can mix them to make additional colors, which is always kind of fun to play with that. I know some people are not real big on mixing and color play. I love it. 
So, um, so should the watercolor be dry before adding marker lines? Yes, but like I said, we did all of this just sitting here yes. in one step yeah. in a couple of minutes, so there is not a whole ton. It dries super fast. Super People fast. want to see you write love on one of those blank Oh, pictures. Jesus, are you <laughs> serious? Whatever they said. <laughs> okay, so that's my simple little little vineyard that's here. beautiful. Thank that's you. Because they you. said now they're jealous of your writing. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to tell you that I made these last night, and just like Cameo mentioned, they are um, they are not set up as much as I would like them to, or I, they're not ready for markers. So I'll just kind of do this little thing in the side. Do you see how shaky I am? This is ridiculous. Well, it's a little nerve-wracking. I totally get it. Okay, so I do a thin line first. And then I usually come back and thicken my lines. Are people being ridiculous on Yes, here? you hear baby Gigi. <laughs> yeah, baby Gigi's here. I will put her on camera with me in a minute so everyone can see baby Gigi. She is dressed for success to me too. Okay, people I will want to know how you did the hearts too. Oh, gosh, I they're... They look it. They okay. Like I feel like I'm taking forever, guys. No, you don't have to do it. Just hey. tell them. Okay, so what I did, in a very similar to, I moved that cookie out of the way. This I really love because you can blend and mix. And then I just added some different, actually that one's fallen off. So it's like a different little candy thing. I love sprinkles because like, um, like Becky, I really love the texture. Um, so what I would do here with these little hearts is I'm just gonna paint a heart. And as I mentioned, it's gonna dry super fast. This has a little yellow mixed in it. Um, it operates a lot like an acrylic paint. So that's gonna dry here real quick. I didn't put any red. Here, this one's a luster. And you just go right on top. So these colors are probably a little bit too similar and my hearts are looking kind of wonky right now, but that's how that goes. And just I just, one right on top of one, the and because they yeah. dry so quickly, um, you can totally do that. Yeah, and your colors don't, don't bleed or blend into each other. No, right, and they don't bleed, they don't blend. So that's kind of how I did that. I When I did this one here, I did kind of, I did make sure that they were a little bit thicker and filled in. Um, but like you see, they just fill right on top of each other like an acrylic. And then this one is my favorite TMP Gold. Operates the exact same way as far as the way I use it. Um, and uh, that's kind of what made me think, huh, I wonder if this luster dust and petal dust would work the same way. So that's it, guys. Looks gorgeous. Are there questions I, I forgot uh, to answer? Let me scroll back through and see. If, were there any questions that we missed, girls? Did you see any? I pop think up? I got them all instead of Katie. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't hardly glare. I can't oh, okay. make eye contact with anybody while I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, I, you're welcome, Karen. I see your comment. We, we love to get together and do tutorials. It's just fun. We have as good a time as you guys watching. Yes, it's really fun. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys. Uh -huh. Beautifully delicious on Facebook and Instagram. It is yes. BDKC uh, Bakery. And I also posted a link earlier in the comments to the resources page on my website that has um, anybody who is a Kansas City cookier who has shared their logo and link with me. You can find it on my website at thecolorfulcookie.com under resources too, and Katie's on there. Uh, thanks, guys. Okay, now we have to take the camera off. Yes, we will have to um, move the camera Ooh. and tell people to share. April, April from Sweet and Saucy Life is here. Let me, I'm going to have to turn my camera up, you guys. So, um, actually, I think I'm just going to take it off of here and hold it. Just let her light it. So we should have put you last. Oh, you guys should have seen my face. I just panicked because I hit the button on my phone trying to take it out of my Archon mount. So here is April from Hello, Sweet and Saucy Life to talk to you. Yes, yeah, so I am like the most anti comladic person here tonight because um, I'm not doing a demo because I didn't even know I was coming until like three hours ago. But I asked her to talk. But, um, so. But I do have an exciting announcement if you're in the Kansas City area or wherever, if you can get to Kansas City. Um, I'm hosting an event in June. It's June 6th through the 8th in the Kansas City area for cookiers. So I'm doing a little bit of a spin, a little different spin, like I do at Sweet and Saucy Life. And we're also going to have 
cookies with hands-on demonstrations and instructors, but we're also gonna have a business twist to it. So it's going to be, if you're thought about starting your own business, or if you wanna scale your business or come up with another way to earn some revenue without actually cranking out more cookies, because we all have a limit, right? <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to figure out what that limit is, but we all have a limit. But that doesn't mean your revenue has to have a limit. So we'll be talking about that, so we'll have both cookie instructors and teachers and business instructors and teachers. So we'll be making that announcement on February 1st. So if you don't follow me or have my newsletter, you're gonna to wanna to get on my newsletter at sweetandsaucylife.com and all that information will come out on February 1st. We only have a limited amount of tickets. So we have 50 tickets because I wanna keep it small so that we can really grow community and get to know each other and um, really focus on the people that are there. Um, sometimes they think that if it gets too big, you don't ever get to see everybody and you don't, you're just kind of passing each other. So we're keeping it kind of small and we have two different options. We have a VIP option where you get lots of extra perks and then we have a general admission option. So um, be sure to join the newsletter if that's something you're interested in. So okay. that's it. Thank you, April. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. So and you had a lot of people telling you hi. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hello, hello. Sorry. Okay. And Debbie from Icing Women just says to let her know if you need a sponsor. Oh, email me. Info at sweetandsaucylife.com. Now, you guys, let me figure out how to um, get my camera back into the holder without pushing any buttons. Sister to the rest. Give it to your sister. Which way was it? Oh, that's here. I'm gonna let you. Yeah. <laughs> just try not to hit a button. <laughs> I've been known to cut lives off before an accident, but if we if we accidentally do that, we'll come right back on. No worries. Now you can slide it. There you go. Glinda Goodwitch from Decorate the Cake is here. Look at this awesome. I keep saying tree log, but it's not a log. It's a tree slice. Right, Glenda? Sure. <laughs> Come on She's like, sure, get out of my way. Excuse me. Glenda's <laughs> up. I love, okay, I have to say, I think his passcode is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know my hands in the way, you guys, but I don't want to hit any buttons on my phone. <laughs> I'm going to have to scoot my phone back. Every time we move the phone, it's a chore to get it back in place. Okay. Funny, funny, her passcode Something is little still sister, don't it. touch my stuff. What is, huh. that's, okay. It's a lag. Oh. <laughs> I thought, I thought uh, the, that the Archon Mount was pushing the button. But somebody called me. Yeah. Don't call me, people. <laughs> I'm on a live. <laughs> okay. Do I need to move? Which way? Um, actually. Yeah, they've lost us. Oh, no. I'm going to we're still live. Can you guys see us on the live? I still see comments. Oh, no. They're saying not back, not back, come back. Now they're saying back. No. Yeah. Back. Oops. All right. You're back. Just don't crush Glenda's cookies. Don't crush what? Oh. All right. These can cookies you see are us? old. Okay, Glenda, I'm going to move this so that we can see her. Okay, so what I was saying is my favorite is this one right here because that's my stencil. Can I move it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, feel free to move away. But I really love the dragon's eye. Heck, I just love them all. Oh, that's my stencil, too. That, oh, uh, Cindy did these yeah, over here. Yeah, I, I recognize her yeah. work right away. Yes, exactly. She did uh, use some of my molds on it and stuff. I know. With the but flowers. this was just to show you the tree stump could be used or sliced or whatever you want to call it could be used for a display of cookies these don't match yours probably would but this is what I had at home so I'm going to toss this off to the side and what I use to make um, the tree stump is I use styrofoam that you buy at Home Depot it comes in a four foot by eight foot sheet and you use it on your house. You do not have to use a this stuff, but it's the pink stuff. And see, I even was crappy on my cutting, but it'll look fine. Um, but what I used to cut it was this hot knife. Not hot right now because it's not plugged in, but you just take it and you go around. And this was the bottom while I was cutting, so I obviously wasn't holding it at a 90 degree angle. But if anyone wants to know where to get this, I can get the link to Nancy. I bought it on Amazon, hot knife. 
you know, gotta love Prime. Okay. So I assumed that you guys would know how to roll out. Oh, look, I screwed that all up. That's okay. Um, I rolled the fondant out first and just covered the top here because I'm slow and I figured you guys didn't want to sit here and watch me. So I'm just going to sit it on a turntable real quick that has a little silicone mat on it so that it won't slide on me. So to do the top so it has a ring pattern, I use a Dresden tool or I like sugar shapers and this is the sugar shaper one that has a chisel point. I don't know if they call it chisel point or if they call it Dresden tool. I call it whatever, sharp point edge. So your rings, if you wanna get all anal, you could get cutters and cut your, you know, you could outline your circles and do all that. I don't really give a crap because it's going to be, can I say crap? <laughs> you can say crap. I can say crap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <'Cause> it's, <laughs> it's probably going to be covered with cookies. So I basically just kind of start in the middle and I just sit here and do this and draw until, you know, I might go all the way around. Hey, Deborah. Oh, Debbie. Debbie from Icing Images looked away for a second. Is that the great Glenda Goodwitch? <laughs> Hi, Debbie. It is. She's here. And I just draw my circles or my half circles, or whatever rings you want to call them. Um. Debbie, if you click your heels three times, you might be able to come home to Kansas and see her. <laughs> Anybody else want to click your heels? I'll see you in Austin or Round Rock. So get as many as you want, as few as you want, whatever. I like my philosophy is more is better. So then on a tree stump that's been cut and sat, you get a few cracks. So I like to put one in the middle, but again, this is all up to you. It's your tree stump. I usually wait to do the edge ones until I've done the side. And that's just because if there's a flaw in the side, I'm gonna make it a crack. Cause I'm brilliant like that. Cake decorators. Oh, I, can't, I can say crap, but not crack, okay. <laughs> So I assume you guys know how to hide your flaws. So there you go. So what we're gonna use today, and there are other companies that have silicone texture mats as well and have tree, tree bark ones. If you're particular, this was made off of a pear tree in my friend's backyard. I also have an oak tree one if you have an arborist you're making the cake for. <laughs> and I'm gonna stand up to do this because I'm a wimp and I always say. They can't see you anyway. Oh, that's true, you can't see me. Yeah. So I'm just using fondant, and this is um, satin ice straight out of the bucket. And I left my rolling pin in the tote. Is there a rolling pin in that tote over there? Oh, I thought. Sand. Oh, do you see a tote over there with a rolling? Pin? Well, actually, I think it's on the counter over there. Rolling pin. We need the rolling pin. Yeah. Okay. So I like to put my mats down on my surface and roll on top. Do you have to do that? Obviously not, because Brooke showed us the other way. I prefer it this way because I get a better detail because if you look at this mold, there's some undercuts and stuff like that, and you're not gonna get that detail if you're rolling it this way. So by rolling it this way, and I Look at rolling stuff out. So this is going to be fun here. And I'm not doing this whole tree stump um, because of uh, time. I don't want it to take forever. So after I roll it out to the size, I sit there and I push it because I really want my fondant down in those cracks. This is me again. Do you have to do this? No. Just depends on how much of the detail you want to get. Okay, after you think you've got it really good detail, and I push. Sometimes I use my uh, fondant smoother. Flip it back over. If you pull it this way, you're gonna stretch your design. It's gonna look like crap. So, flip it over. Again, crap. Do you not dust it before rolling it? No, um, you shouldn't have to. If it sticks to your, um, 
silicone mat. It shouldn't. I've never had that issue. Some people do. Yeah. You can condition your fondant a little bit with some shortening or something, um, but I don't ever have the issue of it sticking. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I don't like to dust my mats because when you dust your mat, you're gonna get dust in the crevices and you're gonna lose your detail. The same thing with a mold. You have a flower mold. If you dust that mold, you're gonna get stuff in the crevices and you're gonna lose your detail. So, I don't. So, you're just gonna roll this back and as you roll it back, you have your schmancy detail. So, I cut off the bottom because that looks like crud. See, look at the, I can learn. <laughs> okay. The dummy I have is about two inches tall. You can get fancy and use a ruler. I usually just stick my finger on it and go, oh, it's about that tall. <laughs> And I actually want to do it, a, the way I like to do it, I like to do it so it's a little bit taller than the cake, than the styrofoam dummy. And this is just water. It's in a little bottle that I got at Michael's. Came in a three pack in the crafting, the scrapbook section. Tell them your website again. Decorate the cake. Dot com. And I brought that, but I'm going to put it on the side. I don't know what they can see. If I angle it, can they see the side better, I'm hoping? No, nope, not really. So anyway, here we go. I'll hold it like this. So if I want to knot, because I'm only going to do a couple of these, what I do is I put a blob, it's a technical term, <laughs> Where's my spray? I don't want to spray myself in the face. I put my blob of fondant, and it doesn't matter what it looks like. I sprayed the back of this, and I'm just going to line it up on the bottom and press it in. Is it lined up pretty close? Mm -hmm. Hard to do this. Okay, so I'm going to do another one real quick and not hold it up. Because you're all like, how's that tree stump going to line up? Because I'm going to see a seam everywhere there's a new one. That one I did way tall. Look at that. Okay, so I have two of them on here. So do you see that ugly seam right here? Obvious. Just take your mat, press over it, and voila, your seam goes away. So you can't see the seam anymore. Now, back to our knot. I press it around so that the knot's sticking up. Then this is another one of the sugar shapers, and it's just like a ball tool. Ball tool works, end of a paintbrush works. Your finger works, doesn't matter. Depends on what size it is. Stick it in there. And voila, you have a knot. Okay, so now we're back to this top and my really uneven, yucky edge. And I'm gonna make it really even more uneven and yucky because I sit there and I just pinch it off because I suppose if your tree stump came from a, you just chainsawed it yourself, it's gonna probably be a little smooth, but I like it jagged. I don't like it smooth. You could make it smooth. It's your tree stump, so. <laughs> and then I just go around the whole outside edge and make it smooth. Can you tell it's a little cr smooth, little rough and jaggedy there? A little bit? So there you have it. Now, through the magic of television, I made this one this morning. <laughs> so, and then I have a plate. When you do this, I usually do Hershey's special dark chocolate, which I thought I had, but I've been sick for a week and I was obviously out, so I don't have it. It's not as dark, but this is just Hershey's cocoa powder. And then this is just cornstarch. You don't, ooh, holy <laughs> buckets, Batman. <laughs> Can you remove some of it? Yeah. Okay. 
So I just do that to kind of like get different shades of brown. The top is usually lighter, so I would like pull a little bit over and mix some up here, and then this makes a bloody mess, and I'm sorry. Okay. And all I do, now, can you get fancy with your petal dusts and paint your cracks and do all that? Yep, sure can. How much should they pay you? <laughs> That's what you decide. And if you start with an ivory fondant instead of white, even better. That's really cool. It is really cool. Okay. Voila. Now we're going to flip it up on its side. And the fluffier the brush, the better I feel. Now, if you're worried about your fondant, I left this part out. If you're worried about your fondant, like, squishing when you do this, one, you can do it in advance, let it dry. I put it in the oven with just the light on and uh, leave it overnight and it gets nice and hard. But you can also, if you're short and you're no, you don't plan ahead like me, usually I don't, I add a little CMC powder um, to my fondant and that helps it dry quicker. What is CMC powder? Uh, carbo, Mexel, Flexel, I don't know. It's a really long name. <laughs> and, but, <laughs> but if you uh, look it up. Carboxymethyl? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It is the exact same ingredient that is in powdered fixident. So, oh. in a pinch, if you can't find. <laughs> so, if you can't find. <laughs> And I actually have used it before. It's nice minty. But anyway, so there you have it. Sounds good. Questions, comments, corrections? Love it. So, and then obviously, I usually just take them then out to the garage and use my air compressor and blow all the excess off. But, so, but any questions? Okay. It's awesome. Okay, I'm going to replace this mat. <laughs> so what do you use that for? Do you display oh, cookies on it? Display cookies or a so cake or business? yeah, that's yeah, the same thing, one. exact same thing. Yeah, you can. That's what I like about buying the four foot by eight foot um, yeah. sheet is you can cut any size circle, oval, whatever you want. This one, I actually, I was wanting to know if a one inch because they make a one inch foam just like the pink but I didn't want to buy a four foot by eight foot sheet. So I just put together a bunch of cardboards that came to one inch to see how it would look. Oh, that's smart. And actually it's not solid cardboard rounds. In the middle, there's only a small piece and these edges actually aren't um, thick, but. What would you charge a customer for that? I, I am the worst person in the world to ask that because I don't charge anyone anything. I'm. <laughs> I never charge. I never charge for cakes. I don't. I actually made one for a wedding over the summer, and I just gave it to him. But yeah, that's hilarious. But I can finish it. The eight, I did a 22 inch round one over the summer, and I finished it start to finish was 30 minutes. So it's a very quick process. Okay, it's really so. cool. But you had to buy a four foot by eight foot sheet of styrofoam, so charge them. <laughs> right. Okay, we're going to get this cleaned up. It's going to be right back. Two seconds. Tina, will you throw that in my bag? You painted this high, right? It's not a cutout. Right. It's actually a uh, edible image. Is it an yeah. edible image? I have one at home that I did paint. Okay, so ladies oh, and gentlemen, no. she's good with that one. Or oh, no, I'm look better with one. I guess. Yeah, can you see everything? Yeah, we'll probably let's get you a map. Okay. Okay, we have Amy. I don't know your last name. Sadler. Sadler. She's Nancy's sister. She's coming up and she is going to show us how to do keychains. 
since use, since using we're which piece of equipment? The cricket. the cricket. The cricket. You know, since we use cutting machines and um, we all love cookies, this is an awesome little. I mean, you can make anything with a cricket machine. I always tell you guys that. And Amy, she's going to show us how to do a keychain. Okay, Jarrett says E J D H D H D, like for four lines. It says sorry, autocorrect. I meant hi, mom. Oh. <laughs> Hello, my child. <laughs> Your adult child. Yeah. He's not a child. Well, <laughs> he's an adult, but <laughs> I love you, honey. I love you too. And yes, you can watch this live on Google, correct? Uh, no, on YouTube. I mean, on YouTube, Google. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, wow, that's I mean, different. No, oh, YouTube. <laughs> Where's my brain? Yeah. You, it'll be on replay on the Colorful Cookie Facebook page in the in the videos, and usually it shows up right at the top. And um, it'll also be on my YouTube channel, which if you search the Colorful Cookie on YouTube, it should pop up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Amy's going to use the, um, she's going to use the Xyron machine, the Cricut Easy Press, and she already pre-cut these on uh, my Cricut while she was here. So, look at, aren't those cute? I can do this for you. What do you want on? 285. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I, 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 first I want to say, this is going to be, uh, this file is going to be shared in the Colorful Cookie newsletter in February. So if you go to thecolorfulcookie.com when the live is over and subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get this file as a freebie in cool. the next uh, newsletter. Yeah. And um, it's going to come in the three and a half inch heart, which are these smaller ones. You can make it four inch, but I thought it was a little bit too big for a keychain. So then I did the three and a half inch, and I really like the size and how that turned out. That's the four inch, and that's the three and a half inch next to each other, so. It says the sound's gone. Sound gone, or am I too quiet? Yeah. I mean, you talk too soft. Can you hear me? I says the broadcast stopped, you've cut out again. Okay, well, give it a minute. Maybe something's going on. I can still. Because we didn't touch it. You're not moving. Just Maybe came that's back on. Oh, taking a signature drink mix. Uh, a signature drink break, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. Susan, that's a great idea. Okay, so basically the cookie uh, keychain is, uh, is two pieces of mirrored. I got this pearl faux leather at um, Hobby Lobby, but um, so it's Whoop. two pieces. Yeah, you want to show what it looks like? Mm-hmm. So this is, it has a felt backing. Mm -hmm. And, and it, ooh, look at that pretty color. That's a Cricut rose leather, rose it's, gold. Is it real leather? This is real leather. Yeah, it it's real. Cricut. And this is Cricut faux leather pebbled in like a beige color. That's wow. really pretty. I just wanted to show you guys all the different, yeah. like you could do different colors. I like the pearly white with the That's black really HTV. And I did, um, this is heat transfer vinyl um, black from Cricut that I used. How much are, I, I've never priced this, how much is the faux leather per roll? This one is eight ninety nine, dollars oh. and right now at Michael's it's buy three, get one free, mm -hmm. and Cricut accessories are 40% off at Hobby Lobby. And these are 12 inch by 24 inches, so it'd make a lot of keychains. Actually, Hobby Lobby's only open till eight, and that sale ends today, so oh. wait until we're done here and then go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't leave yet. So, um, I, like I said, I, um, <laughs> Kim says very Ray Dunn looking. Is this that font yes. that's the Ray Dunn font? Yeah. Yes, that's, I love Ray Dunn, uh, Kim. That's, uh, that was kind of, she's kind of my inspiration for things like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the HTV on. So I have my, um, heat press ready to go. And if you, I will post a link, but Cricut Easy Press has a, um, uh, the settings, a settings guide. Oh, yeah. 
and uh, we can share that link I'll find it and share but they have a, cut, a heat settings guide for any material yeah and um, I like the word cookies across from my keychain and I rounded the word a little bit the word cookies so it'll kind of line up with my heart and I just line up and I have I cut big circles out of my um, carrier sheet because I had cut a weeding box in a rectangle around it and when I did the heat press it kind of left a mark on my faux leather but and I also wanted to show you guys how easy this is to weed the word cookies um, when I made the weeding box and it just peels off pretty perfectly and you just weed out the two O's in cookie but it was it's as easy as that and then you just get your little weeding tool and empty your O's out. With the weeding tool. Well, crap. <laughs> it's really easy. Crap, crap. You can't say crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's real life here, people. We're not faking it. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to show you how easy that was to weed. They're saying they're. I wonder if it's because a lot of people are my Wi Fi. Anybody here on Wi Fi? Okay. No. I don't know. It doesn't like Amy today. Come back. <laughs> I don't know what it says. It says back now. Oh, yeah. Back now. Back now. Okay. okay. Forget about that. So, my heat press is, uh, my heat press is ready to go. Do you want this? I I at home I have an, I have my heat press and uh, my easy press and I didn't I do not use anything but oh, Nancy's handing it to me okay. so I always use a Teflon sheet and but I don't have one right here but this is Glinda's flower sack cloth and it'll protect it and she's my older sister so I do what she says <laughs> she says I'm bossy and then I just hit the um, the little green button there. I'm not bossy. And I just my, know what to do. My, that's exactly right. And, and, and by God, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so my 30 seconds countdown for me, I don't use any pressure. I just let it sit uh, for 30 seconds. And I do this before I glue the two pieces together. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Um, because I don't want, because I don't use a Teflon sheet. And I don't use a flour uh, sack, uh, so I don't want the glue to stick to my easy press on the bottom if there happens to be any uh, overage. And you can peel that hot, so it looks just like that. And then <clears throat> it's cool enough. And I have had a Xyron machine. Thank you. Since, since I first saw one 15 years ago, I think, or 10, and. I don't know how people live without it if you do cards or paper crafts or anything like that. So this is a, the newer one, and you really probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to try. This, um, I bought this one on Amazon, and I oh. have that on my favorites page, and we'll share that link with you guys because this is a handy little machine. Yeah, so I just stuck them in, and they kind of go up to a, a line right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, and then there's a little crank on the side, and I turn it, and push, push them in far enough. Yeah, hold up, let me stick them in a little bit further. Uh, does it have to go there? No. It's not, are you turning it the wrong way because it's upside down? Uh, nope. Here, I'll stick it in there. Go ahead. That, that's the, that's yeah. the top. I'll push, you turn. Normally we don't. We didn't have to do this before. No. Well, there goes that one. Nope, nope. Hang on. I can't see. Okay, it should be going. Why isn't it turning? Amy, it's not turning. Live. Yeah, because we're live. It's not even turning. Well, crap, crap. <laughs> well, normally, and mine. Here, go back this way. There's nothing on this yeah, side to it do. Be, it should be rolling, but it's. Oh, it's not catching. Hold on. Well, it's in there. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. Wait, you got one end flipped up here. Hold on. I don't know. Try it again. Nope. Well, they're okay. not turning. So we through, probably need to take Through the one. magic of TV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we may need to put that roll in again. Yeah, so uh, you put the, these through the Xyron really machine. Yeah, it puts sticky on the back and causes them to be 
stickers, but it's permanent stick. Then you stick them together like so. And then uh, I got these key rings at Michael's. They're $2.99 for 20 of them. And I wasn't buying anything else that day, so I used my 40% off and I got them for a buck 80. And then I, I have a key in my pocket. Just so, so tip and a trick is if you go ahead and put your key in, if I think you should know this, but in case you don't, <laughs> uh, and you're trying to um, uh, thread the key ring, start it with your key and then just follow it uh, along like that to get it on so you don't wreck your leather. And then you can... Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, and then you can take your key off. That's my spare key to my house. Cute. <laughs> and then uh, you have your very own cookies key ring. All right. Just like that. I love it. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Can you go fix my machine now? Yes. <laughs> I wonder, so I have a Cricut cuddle bug. Uh -huh. well, I guess that's not a the cuddle thing. bug is a is an embossing right. machine. Yeah, it right, will right. emboss. It'll emboss leather, leather or faux leather, uh -huh. paper crafts. Um, that's what the cuddle bug does. Okay. Is so that, that's different than that. This is a Xyron machine. It's not by Cricut at all. Yeah. It's actually a. Yeah. I Standalone. dare say a yeah. sticker making machine. Yeah, they really also have awesome. magnets mm -hmm. you can put through, mm -hmm. but it, it literally you run your whatever it is through, and it mm -hmm. it's a complete sticker. And, and you then, can do double sided. Too double sided sticky, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes with all kinds of cartridges are available. Um, and normally, I think we just need to put that roll again, but when you crank that handle, it just rolls it through like a yeah. like a laminating machine that's manual, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Thank so, you. And so, go to the colorful cookie and sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get the um, the uh, the design space uh, link for, for this in February's newsletter. Yeah, if you go to thecolorfulcookie.com, you scroll to the sure? bottom yeah, and it will say oh, uh, subscribe to our newsletter or something like that and you'll you'll get it. But you for sometimes the first newsletter may go to your junk mail. So if you don't get a newsletter after the first week of February, check your junk mail. Mm -hmm. So Okay. So oh, wait, I didn't even look to see if anybody had. Oh. I don't think anybody had any no, questions. No, no. no yeah. questions. You yeah. did so well and explained it so well right? that everyone understood. Exactly. <laughs> I, you, and Kim. I wore my spanks for nothing. I'm not even on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you cut out when you said crap. Oh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> well, crap, crap, crap. So it's my turn. I'll try not to say crap. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna move over to the counter. I'm gonna move over to the counter where the cricket machine is. Okay. Amy, you're gonna video me. Yep. All right. Try not to hit the button. <laughs> Amy, will you share the name of the font you used? Oh, the font that I used is the skinny from dafont.com. They also have, um, Creative Fabrica has a font very similar called Sun, S-U-N-N, -N, but that one is the skinny from dafont. Sun or Sun? All right, we're back, but of course you're upside down, so we're going to turn you right side up. It froze because we hit the button, guys, so sorry. sorry. Oh. Okay, now we're good. Do you need to flip? Is that going to work? Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so last but not least, um, Cindy didn't make it today. She had a cookie decorating class, and she thought she would be here in time, but it ran over, so you're stuck with me last. Um, I want to talk to you about the Cricut cutting machine and cutting stencils. The, the most often asked question that I get is what machine should I buy to make my stencils for cookies or cakes? And I have a, a, a long, but I'll try to make it short answer. The Cricut cutting machines cut with... Well, that makes if, me laugh. Yeah, because you know I, I can't make anything short. <laughs> The Cricut cutting machines. Here's your long short answer. Yes, the Cricut cutting machines cut with a lot of force. Um, even the very first Cricut, the Cricut Explore, cuts with a lot of force. But the Cricut Air 2 cuts with a lot of force, plus it's a little speedier than the very first Cricut they came out with. The Big Daddy is what I like to call the Cricut Maker. Cuts with 1,000 grams of force, which is awesome and amazing, and it's very fast. Um, you use the same software, Cricut Design Space, for all of those Cricut machines. 
people say, well, I have a cameo or should I buy a cameo? I love my cameo. I have a cameo. I have a brother's skin and cut. I have a crooked. I love my cameo, but it does not, for me, it does not cut the thicker stencil material very well. I have to make three or four passes and I've tried every cut setting possible and it's frustrating. And so I just stuck with my Cricut. I cut everything on my Cricut. So the next question I get is, well, if I have a cameo and I use the Silhouette Studio software, um, how can I cut my designs on a Cricut? And the answer to that is, you can't use the Silhouette Studio software with your Cricut machine. However, Silhouette Studio has come out with a business version. Why are you smiling? Because Karen said we need a close-up of Gigi. Oh, we'll get, we will get one. <laughs> and it made me smile. I, yes. thought you, I thought Amy was laughing at me. No. I'm going to show you Gigi, I promise. Um, so the Silhouette Studio software, you are able to have total full control over your design. You can get in there. You can um, mess with the edit points. You can make the design anything that you want it to be. And then in the business version of that software, you can export or save that file as an SVG. And that is a universal cut file. Cricut Design Space, you can use to upload that SVG file that you've created in Silhouette Studio and cut it on your Cricut machine. Now, uh, let me follow that with this. Cricut Design Space is an awesome software, that, and I'll call it a software, it's online. Um, but you have, you download, you have to download it to your computer. Um, it tries to do a lot for you. It's great software. I love it. It's easy and convenient and the learning curve is a lot less. So um, when you buy a Cricut machine and you use Design Space if you want to make stencils, you're good. You can do that just fine. You have, if you buy the Cricut Access subscription, you have access to like 60,000 images. It's 80 and, now. Is it 80? 80,000. And, and I, I can't even remember how many fonts now. Yeah. And they have some really cool designs that you can use for stencils, but you have to do a little tweaking with those designs to make them work as a stencil. And, um, you know, that can totally be done. I do cover, people ask me, do you show how to create SVGs? Yes, I do. I show how to create them in Silhouette Studio. And people say, do you show how to use Cricut Design Space? Yes, I do. I show how to design stencils in Cricut Design Space also. Um, and another question that Sorry. I will often get. You have some comments and I can't read them on your okay. phone. So go ahead though. Okay. Um, another question I often get mm -hmm. is, do you teach how to make silk screen stencils? Yes, I do. I teach how to design those, how to cut those, how to use those um, in the Colorful Cookie Club. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the to thecolorfulcookie.com slash club and you can see the details of the club. Um, I try to share helpful tips in my monthly newsletter for cutting stencils. And um, so you can learn a little bit there too, but that can't be taught quickly. It can't be taught in a, a couple of conversations. That's something that is a whole list of skills that you need to learn over time. So that's why I started the Colorful Cookie Club. And if you have a cutting machine and you don't wanna learn how to design, I do sell digital downloads that you purchase, download instantly, and you cut those stencils on your cutting machine. So um, let me think if I was, oh, I was just gonna show you a few of my favorite things before I start. Um, so this is my Cricut Explore Air 2 from Icing Images. And uh, they sell these online as a kit, and it comes with the tools. You'll get, um, oh, I can't remember exactly what comes in the box. Um, they, they are giving away a couple of these stencil combo kits, and you can see what comes in their box if you go to icingimages.com. And we also, did we share a link earlier, Amy, for Icing Images? Yes, mm -hmm. it's in the there. comments, but there are a lot of comments. So at the end, I will go back and post yeah. Again, so you'll okay. find you should find it several times throughout, and I can answer questions then too. Um, so this is the stencil combo pack for traditional stencils with bridges, and then also the vinyl stencils made out of the vinyl and the silk screen, and it contains the transfer tape as well. Um, so Kim says, join the colorful cookie club worth every penny. Oh, thank you'll you, Kim. You'll make your money back. I love the colorful cookie club. Thank you, Kim. I love it. I have the best. We just have a good community of people there that help each other, and it's just, it's awesome. We have a live every Thursday, and um, 
gosh, I think 235 videos now available, mm -hmm. but thank you, Kim. And then someone said, how do I sign up for the giveaways? And it's just share this live yeah, just share um, it. while it's live and you'll be entered um, to win the giveaways. And there are lots. And I've posted all of them throughout the comments, but okay. I know there are a lot of comments to go through. Yeah. So And we'll, we'll, we'll go back after the live and yeah. check everything and add more. We'll do a recap at the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the compartments on the Explore Air 2 um, for, for blades. This, by the way, comes with the machine. It's a deep cut blade, housing and blade. You push this little plunger and the blade pops up and this thing is sharp, so don't touch it and cut yourself. Um, then this is a compartment for your tools. I don't keep too many tools in here. I mostly keep the tools right here so I can grab them. This is your um, carriage that holds your blade. Now, I will show you this, and I, I sh I'm showing you this for a reason. I cut, um, hold on. Oh, I was gonna show this pretty cookie too. Um, I cut a stencil. Oh, I just wanna talk about that. Let me find it. Well, okay, I cut a stencil last night to show you. It was out the, there. The hearts. Yeah. It, it's not on the mat anymore in the office. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's, it's okay. I can just show them this. So I, I cut a stencil with little bitty hearts uh, for a cookie background. And can you guys see this? Can they see that, Amy? Don't move. Okay. Hang on. If your machine stops cutting and you can't figure out why, take the blade out of the carriage. I can't get it good okay. enough. Hang on. Well, oh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> I held it just right. Yeah. This little heart got stuck and my uh, it quit cutting. And so before I push the button to make the mat go out, I will first take this housing out and check the blade and lo and behold, there's a heart stuck to it. No problem though, I don't have to ruin that stencil. I just, um, you know, take the little heart off without touching the blade. I can push this plunger um, and I wanna get that heart off of there. And now it will cut again. All I have to do, because I haven't removed that stencil yet, is put this back in the housing. See, I just slipped that back in there. Close this. And I don't, I don't let the mat exit. I just push the C again, and it will cut in the exact same spot. And so I haven't ruined the stencil material. Um, and if your blade is not cutting, and you look at it, and there's nothing stuck to it, it's time for a new blade, I'm going to guess. So... What I did, though, I got a new blade because um, I've had this one in here for a really long time. So I'm going to change my blade so that you can see me do that. Now, like I said, this is sharp. Don't do what I do. I don't wear gloves or do anything special. I just take, I just pull the blade out, and I'm really careful. And any used blades, I'll put in here on the magnet, and I know these are used. And so if I want to go cut something that um, I just want to see if it works. I'll test out this blade again later, and if it's truly dull, I'll throw it in the trash. But I opened a new blade. I used the Cricut Fine Point Blade. It's German carbide. It's long-lasting, and they truly do last me a long, long time. And I cut a lot of stencils. Every day I'm cutting stencils. They are a little hard to get out of the packaging, so let's see if I... Oh, do you have my weeding tool? Yes. Uh, it's right there. Okay. Sometimes I have a hard time getting these out, so there's, they get really stuck in there. So I pull this out, <clears throat> and I'll show you this. This is the blade that I prefer, the premium fine point blade, German carbide. I buy them at Michael's when they're in Soho Hobby Lobby. I also get them on Amazon, and these are linked on my uh, website and on my Amazon favorites. So you pull the little cap off. And by the way, I know my blades are old. I don't know if you noticed, but that blade I put back on here does not have a cap. And I know that's a blade that's been used. If I have a new blade that's still good, I always put the cap back on it if I take it out. So you just pop this back in here. It's mag magnetic um, and it'll slip right down in there and you're ready to go. So put that back in the carriage here and tighten that. Um, another thing that I want to show you, one of my favorite things is this little bench scraper. I just, I call it a chopper. Um, it, I get these at the Dollar Tree and they clean my mat perfectly. You have to hold it at the right angle like this, but it just scrapes everything right off instantly. And when I make a stencil, all my pieces are left behind on my mat and my stencil comes off clean. 
except, you know, I'm on live today, so that may not happen, but typically that happens every time. I never have to pick anything out of my stencil. I use these little things. <laughs> these are just those 3M hooks. Um, and I hang all my mats on the wall. And I have new mats, kind of used mats, and I have old mats. So I will just take this and I hang it on the wall. And you know, and I have these, because I, I know if they're good mat or not so good. I use the purple mats, that's my favorite. Some people like to use the green. The purple mat is the strong grip, it's really sticky. And I like it that way because I want those little heart pieces that got stuck in the blade, I want them stuck to the mat, not on my blade. And when I cut that heart stencil, um, I was using a green, or I was using one of my mats that was not so new. So I have new, a new mat here to use today that I'll show you. And by the way, everything that I use with my Cricut is edible. So this Cricut is for edible things only. It's not for other uses. And I have more than one. I have a Cricut Explorer that's my original one, and I use it for paper and stuff like that. Can I Leather. ask you a couple of questions? Yes, you can. Uh, okay, I'm removing the cover from the mat. That's very important. Yes. Uh, can you just purchase Silhouette Studio Business Edition yes. software and then use the Cricut to cut with? Yes. Yes. And that's what I recommend. Is the Cricut attached to the computer or is it Wi-Fi? It's either, uh, the, that's why they call it the Air because it has Bluetooth. Today, <coughs> I have it plugged in just because I want to make sure that because I'm not in my office and I'm away from the where the you know the Wi-Fi is located, I want to make sure so it's plugged in. But I I typically never have mine plugged into my computer. I never have trouble with my uh, Bluetooth attaching. Okay. okay, so a couple of things here. People always ask me about what stencil material I use. There's a whole variety, but <coughs> I have my favorites. And I well, this is Icing Images. A uh, clear seven mil stencil material, and that's what comes in their packages. And um, uh, the cut settings for this, I'll share with you guys more about that in a minute. Graphics, I mentioned, has come out with a food safe version. Oh, Graphics also has something like this in clear that you order on Amazon. It's really good stencil material. It is not deemed food safe. I just have to throw that in there. Doesn't mean it isn't, it's just not been tested. Um, but I, I love the graphic seven mil material. And I also love that, uh, icing images, theirs is polyester and it is deemed food safe. they that has been checked and tested. Um, this is the product that is new from graphics. I've, um, been talking to them for two years about getting something like this available for cookiers and cake decorators in the 12 by 12 sheets in the thickness that we need. And they finally are getting ready to take it to market. And it, it should be, um, I have the pricing list and everything uh, as far as wholesale goes. But all that will come out on Amazon from their retailers here, I think maybe in a month or so. I will share as soon as I find out because this is really good material. It's cloudy, but see, you can see through it. Mm -hmm. That's graphics. Yes, graphics. Graphics has the food safe that they're getting ready to come put out. Um, Icing Images has the food safe polyester, which is totally see-through. Icing Images also has the vinyl stencil material and the screen in their package that you can get from them. So there's, there are sources for your stencil materials that are food safe if you need that material. And Suzanne wants to know the um, stencil that Sandra used in the airbrush demonstration, the name of it. Uh, I, buffalo, buffalo plaid. I don't, was, on was my it site, the, I, I don't know if I called it buffalo plaid. If you go to my site and search plaid, you'll be able to find it. Suzanne, it's at the colorfulcookie.com. Yeah. And then go to the shop, shop designs, and um, it should be under plaid or buffalo you plaid. You can use the search bar and type in plaid, and we can share the link later. And plaid is P-L-A-I-D in case anybody um, wants to know. Okay, let's see. Let me talk about... Uh, the difference in stencils for just a minute. Did okay. you say seven mil? Seven mil for what? Icing images, uh, food safe stencil material, seven mil. Um, graphics food safe is going to be available in five and seven mil. And also the graphics uh, Duralar, uh, not this, that's not theirs. 
uh, which I don't have it right here, is also avail available in five and seven mil in the 12 by 12 sheets, which I talked to them about because I wanted the food safe available in the 12 by 12 because when we have 12 by 12 sheet, we lay it on our mat and we can get four stencils out of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me talk about vinyl stencils for just a minute. This is a design from Clean Cut Creative. Hello, Olga, if you're watching. Um, she, uh, Cutting for Business posted this on her Facebook page as a freebie from Clean Cut Creative. And I was like, oh, that'd make an adorable cookie. And so this is a vinyl stencil without bridges that I created. Now, Olga put some bridges in her design, not probably on purpose because she made this as an SVG for a transfer, like a shirt or something or a mug. But she, uh, there are bridges in here automatically, but you don't see any in the counters where the E is. See the, the um, center of the E, the center of the A, the center of the O. Those are called counters, and those are not bridge, but they're stuck in place because I actually adhered this heat transfer vinyl to silk screen, just like you would silk screen on clothing. So, so you have a sticky sheet on silk screen. Yes, so only you, you, it's not sticker sticky. It only sticks once you put the heat press on it. Okay, they, but it is they adhesive. HTV. Yes, okay. it's heat transfer vinyl HTV, and it is. Um, you have to activate this, the the adhesive by applying heat with the heat press, and, and then so you get a clean. You get a very clean look, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. And I do teach how to do this and assemble these and use them in the Colorful Cookie Club. Mm -hmm. Plus, all the other ladies in the club are so, and gentlemen too. I have men in my club. Hey men, if you're watching. <laughs> Actually, guys, those girls, I should say, those men help their wives. I just knocked some pearls off. Um, those men help their wives design and, and cut cookie stencils for them because they have bakeries. Isn't that nice of those men? Um, so here's the cookie using the stencil that Olga provided. It was a free download. You can probably still get it at Clean Cut Creative. I'm going to get in close and look how s sweet. That's okay. That, I mean, that's just perfect. Yeah. It's a very, very clean looking yeah. stencil. That's just perfect. Yeah. So... These materials that you uh, see that I used here. Oh, Dieter's smiling. Oh, Dieter, hello. He's one of our men. Dieter's one of our men in the club that helps his wife. <laughs> and Richard. Richard, we could never forget the men. Yeah, Richard's my good helper. Yeah. And then we have we, we couldn't Michelle's do it without husband, you guys. Jason, helps her all the time. And it's just, it's good. Um, also, <laughs> Dieter's the one says, who, how big is that cookie? Dieter designs cookie cutters. He's, he's selling actual cutters but he's also selling digital downloads that are cookie cutters for people with 3d printers and he gives us cookie cutter designs in the club so he's a very nice guy so we also not only do we get free stencils in the club we get free cookie cutter files um all right so that is that cookie now this vinyl and screen stencil um these materials from icing images if you wanted to just test it out and try a little bit these materials from Icing Images, you can make a vinyl and screen stencil with them. Mm -hmm. The vinyl provided in this packet, though, is adhesive-backed vinyl that's sticky-backed, Oracle 651, mm -hmm. or Oracle 651. Yeah. Um, it is not heat transfer. It's actually got the sticky yeah, and it's you just, permanent. Yeah, you just yeah. press it down. Yeah. So you can not use press, HT, heat press, but press right. with a You brayer. can use heat transfer vinyl or adhesive-backed vinyl like Oracle 651. Okay, so this stencil is what I'm going to show you today that we're going to cut. This is a download from the ColorfulCookie.com. I just added it. Um, it is a cactus PYO, and you can see in there that there are bridges because this is just stencil material, and to keep the design intact inside the stencil frame, they had to be bridged to hold the design in place. And that's adorable. Isn't that cute? Yes. I'm stuck on you. Now, I haven't added the words or anything, so if I have any, anybody, see, if you're in the club, you can design your own words. You can make your own PYO even, but if you don't have time, just download this, and I'm stuck on you, or I love you so much it hurts, or love is painful, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah, if you want to see it on a cookie, um, this, and this, PYO Cutter is an absolute awesome PYO Cutter. Dieter designed this cutter and shared this file with us in the club. So I downloaded it and printed it on my 3D printer. Um, but I put the stencil on it last night. 
And um, can Donna, you see it? It's white. Yeah. Donna wants to know what Dieter's website is. And Donna, it's there's a link. It's a Facebook page. Uh, yeah, there is a link in the comments. Um, L2... See, 3D printing on Facebook. And we've shared his link too. It's yeah. in there. But this is how it looks on a cookie. And obviously, I haven't put the paint dots on here. Um, but that's what the PYO looks like. And um, Dieter does design cookie cutter stencils. He does, I mean, cookie cutters and stencils both. Oh, he does yeah. an excellent job. And I, um, I also design cookie cutters. But I'm not a 3D printer expert. I have three. I use them, but Dieter's my go-to for support when I have a question. And Donna, Dieter just answered you right underneath your comment, so. Okie dokie. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to show the printable. If you ever buy a download from thecolorfulcookie.com, you get this PDF, and sometimes people don't know what to do with it. It's a printable. <laughs> You print it, you just pull it up, print it, and you cut it out with your scissors. That's why it has scissors at the bottom. And you store the stencil behind it so that you can see what your stencil is. You know when you have a lot of stencils and you're going through them, a lot of them are clear. Um, you want to be able to see what it is. The printable goes right behind it. So that's included in the download. Okay, so let's cut a stencil. I have the... Um, Purple mat, which is super sticky, which is my preference. I'm going to close that lid. Remember, I took the cover off of the mat, and this is brand new, so it's sticky. It's really sticky. Um, right now, I'm not going to de-sticky it because my counter's full, but normally with a brand new purple mat, I make sure my counter's clean. I'll flip it over, and I'll just put it down a couple times to whoop, de stick it a little bit. We might de sticky it on accident. Yeah, and I don't want to de sticky it on my sweater because it will never be sticky again. Okay. So I'm going to line it up. Oh, well, that didn't line it up. Hang on. You have to get it exactly on the mat where it goes. Press it down good. If you're going to do four. Yeah, if you get four out of it. Yeah, and I always, I just. And I'll, sh here, let me just show you. Um, hold on. Okay. So if you're doing four, here's what I do. You can see here, um, I see the cover is on this one. I've cut one, two, three. Look at this beautiful rose background. I wonder if I have that. Um, this is a Cricut Access image if you need an example. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, and it made the beautiful It cookie. looks beautiful on a cookie. Um, but uh, this is a Valentine stencil, but you can see I've cut some and I'll just hang this back up on my wall and every time I want, if I just want to cut one, I just run it through and I, on the screen, I move it over to cut right here. So that's how that looks. So we can, um, before I cut the stencil, let me get over here on design space. Um, I have a couple pulled up here. They're different colors and because of that, when I click make it, it will try to cut on two different screens, which is fine, but I really don't want to cut the polka dots right now, so I'm gonna click the eye. And I always say play peekaboo. It just hides it if I click the eye there. So I'm going to put my mat under the feeders. Right here are the feeders on the Cricut machine. And I will push the arrow to enter the mat. I push right here, and so the mat rolled up in here. And then I come back over to my software. I'm going to click Make It. And then Continue. And it will tell me to select my device, which you can see my maker's connected by Bluetooth, but I've got my Explore Air plugged in. And when I have three Cricut machines, that's why I didn't want that to interfere with my um, cutting today and I didn't the Bluetooth, so that's why I plugged this one in. So you can see I have favorites up here. Here is food safe stencil material, graphics food safe stencil material. This is the graphics clear. This setting I know is icing images, food safe stencil material. So I know my settings here. These are my favorites. So I will show you um, my food safe settings or my 007. Um, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom because that's where my, whoops, no, let me click my favorites. Um, here are categories. I can go to my materials that I have set. Right here are the three. And so 
Um, this is the food safe stencil material. Let me see if I can, I'm gonna click right here on material settings in the lower left hand corner. I don't know if they can see that screen very well. Not but. very well just because it's. Now I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. That's where they are at the bottom. I had to select to see them. You can see right here, the graphics clear, seven mil, I have set at 350. Mm -hmm. I cut two times with the fine point blade. I can click edit and I can change that if I want to. Here is the icing images, food safe material, 350, two times, fine point blade. Even though these settings are the same, I, I like to differentiate for what material I'm cutting. <coughs> um, Donna, it, you can use an iPad for design space, but you can do more on your computer than you can on the iPad. I don't design on my iPad. It's too small, I can't see. I like my computer screen. And the, the Design Space app limits you. I mean, there's not as many you, uh, capabilities, but, yeah. but you, it, you on, can. On, on your iPad. You, you can, can design on your iPad. You can design on your computer and cut from your iPad if you're out, if you already design your, um, the image you want, and then you, if you're going out, you can use your iPad to cut it, but designing on your iPad isn't that easy. Yeah. Okay, so here's the graphics food safe material set at 350, and I make three passes, three times, fine point blade. All right, so I'm gonna click done. I am cutting the icing images, oh, icing images material here. My, my map came out, hold on. Let me put it back in there. Okay, Jennifer, I have a map. So I don't know the difference between Mac and PC, but I would imagine that it's exactly the same because it's online. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They both work. But you have to have, you, you have, there are system requirements for design space and you need to look those up. Okay, Explore Air 2. Here we go. Okay, now I've set it to cut. My C is blinking at me. It's on custom because I have a custom cut setting. And away we go. And I will tell you guys that sometimes I cut into my mat, but I don't really care because I, it doesn't cut all the way through. It'll leave marks once in a while, but that is not a big deal. Um, I have cut mat, cut marks in all my mats. As long as it doesn't cut all the way through, it's not a big deal. If it happens to cut all the way through, it usually is right here along the bottom where it cuts multiple times. I will use blue painter's tape on the back of these mats and they'll it'll make them hold up and they last forever. Especially the purple because they come super sticky. Hey, Cameo, are you leaving? I am. Bye. Goodbye, Cameo. <laughs> Grab your candle. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you for the tutorial. I also have a brand new blade in here. Um, so it may cut into my mat a little bit, but like I said, that doesn't bother me. I'd rather have a good clean cut stencil and have it, you know, cut into my mat a teeny bit rather than not cut through at all. So. But this blue painter's tape, I can't live without. My scraper from Dollar Tree. Um, these hooks to hang my mats on, and um, you know my Cricut machine. I like I said, I like my Cameo, but it I don't have as good of luck with it cutting through the thicker material, and I like my stencils to be thick. So this will make um, a couple of passes. What'd you say? I said me too. Oh yeah, this will make a couple of passes. And so, but I cut this PYO because I knew it wouldn't take as long as if we cut, you know, a background. Mm -hmm. But really, the cricket cuts very quickly mm -hmm. in the scheme of things. Yeah. So, you can see it cutting. We really don't have to have it finished. But this is what the stencil looks like, and that's just what I wanted to show you. So we don't, yeah, I mean, you don't really need to sit here and watch that cut. Yeah. But I want to say... Thank you to everyone for coming. Thank you to all my cookie friends for coming and being so willing to do tutorials because it can be nerve wracking to be in front of people and know that you're being watched. And um, I just want to say I knew last night I was doing a tutorial, so. Yeah, we kind of sprung that yeah. on Amy at the last minute. <laughs> we have to have a little Gigi. Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> and this is my niece, Macy, by the way. And this is my niece, Gigi. Come here, baby. This is
this baby Gigi. Gracie Gale is her name, but we call her Gigi. And she's the sweetest thing ever. Thank you, Donna. Aren't you? Tracy, Kim, yeah. Karen. Oh, oh, oh. She's a grabber. She's a grabber. But look at this cute little vest. Aren't sweet you sweet? I think that's Kathy. <laughs> so, oh, and thank you to my husband and sons for, look at the beautiful flowers they sent me. Have you ever seen colorful roses? What a gift. I love it. So, the giveaway, we you, will Jennifer. we will be Linda. drawing names. We'll go through everyone who shared the live, during the live. And we will um, randomly draw winners for all the giveaways from Cookie Nip and April from Sweet and Saucy Life and from the Colorful Cookie Club and from Creative Cookier and from Dieter at L2... Um, C3D printing. I don't have to think about that. And icing images and graphics and... Who am I forgetting? Oh, Mary Nan from This Little Piggy and Tammy from CookieCutter.com and Do Easy, Brenda from Do Easy. I mean, we've got we've got giveaways and Glenda and Glenda from Decorate the Cake. Yeah, I don't want to forget anybody because they're so kind to offer to give something away. So if you've shared the post or the live during the live, we are going to be drawing names for that, and you'll be notified uh, by Facebook Messenger. So, wave, baby Gigi. Oh. <laughs> Gigi, hi. Gigi, say bye, everybody. Say bye. 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 Thank you for watching.